Okay, in this video we're going to look at um, what was called the scaphoid series. So this bone here, we're going to look at um, the various projections that are taken to do a full survey of the scaphoid series. So there are four projections. There's the standard dorsi palmar projection of the hand and wrist. There's um, a specialist angled projection of the dorsi palmar hand and wrist. Um, the lateral and the oblique, not necessarily in that order. The study that we're going to pick is we're going to pick the phantom hand flexed in this case. We're going to make the selection and we're going to choose upper extremity. Is it upper extremity or is it wrist and hand? Hand and wrist, sorry. And then we're going to pick um, scaphoid left. And the patient's body part is recumbent indeed, and we're going to do PA. So, hit the exposure button. So, we'll set this down at about two, something like that. And we'll pick our patient. So, bring our patient into the room and raise the table. So, we're going to need a. Um, in the old days, um, this used to be done by um, splitting a receptor like this into four. You used to put a bit of lead, cover three quarters of it, and then x-ray one um, of the projections in that space, and then another in this space, another in that space, another in that space. Gave rise to quite a pleasant appearance. Of course, we can't do that these days because um, it was always a bit dubious, but each image has its own metadata. So um, that's data about data. And so when we choose to do a projection, the metadata for the name of that projection is, is on this particular um, image. And so having four different projections with only one set of metadata is going to be messy and not very good. So um, indeed, we, we don't advise that. So what we want to do is do four projections um, of the hand and wrist. Um, so we'll do that now. Okay, so we're going to center between, it always says to center between them the um, styloid processes of the radius and ulna um, in the books and then column 8. Now there is also, um, you know, conversation around ulnar deviation of the of the hand, and obviously the fingers wouldn't be in this flex position which we have our phantom in. So, collimation should include um, the metacarpals ideally, and the distal um, radius and ulna. Because a, a scaphoid fracture is never, you know, exclusively just a scaphoid fracture. The history could be a radio, radius um, fracture, or um, so that's a possibility we we shouldn't shirk from trying to investigate. Okay, um, just leave my marker there, and we'll expose this. Okay, so we've got our PA um, scaphoid projection. We'll just flip this round. Here's our thumb. Um, so first, second, third, fourth, fifth metacarpals, radius and ulna. And we've got a scaphoid lunate triquetral pisiform, hamate, capitate, trapezium, trapezoid, trapezoid and trapezium in that order. So we've got those there. Um, that's nice. We'll go on and do the next image. So we'll look at the, um, the textbook. The same scenario, but we angle the tube um, towards the elbow, um, 15 degrees. Some books will say 20 degrees, some books will say 15, some will say 25. 
Um, what we're trying to achieve here is to elongate the scaphoid. It's actually in some books it's called the um, axial scaphoid, but of course we know it's not axial because for a projection to be a true axial, then the um, receptor has to be in the axial plane. And it isn't, it's in the coronal plane, as is normal for most radial graphs. So we'll give this 15 degrees and have a look at this, see where we go. Flip it again. You can see how this has elongated the scaphoid, so that it gives you more of a chance to see um, the distal pole in that position. Let's do a 25 just to see what would happen if we did it to 25 degrees, as some books I suggest is better. It's quite extreme, 25 degrees, I think. And... There we go. It's fairly extreme. We're now getting a lot of overlap between the radius and the um, proximal um, body of scaphoid where we didn't before. So I think 25 is probably a little bit too extreme. And compare that with the standard projection. Of course, you see through the other um, carpal bones, we can actually see the carpal spaces clearer. Um, in the standard projection compared to the angled projection. Okay, so now on to our next um, projection, which is going to be an oblique. So we'll straighten the tube again. Raise it back up to its working height, move it back to the middle. And this time we're going to rotate our patient's wrist um, so what we're looking at is a semi-oblique position. So we're, we're not lateral and we're not dorsipalmar. We're something in between. And again, you can get steep obliques and shallow obliques. All um, Each book has its own discussion about the obliques. Um, and we'll uh, look at that as a potential image there and see what we get. I'm going to call this um, the oblique. And drop this down to 2.5. Again, we're going to have to flip this because um, it actually spends some time. So the oblique's good for, um, we can see the lunate, the sort of cup shape of the lunate there, and the capitate in the, in the lunate. Um, and we can see the distal pole of um, the scaphoid quite nicely here in this oblique. So that's quite nice. And this is um, trapezium trapezoid first metacarpal so quite nice images there showing us a different um, part of the of the scaphoid so now we'll go on to our, our final image which is the lateral so what we want to do is raise this up again and rotate it until the radius and the ulna are superimposed. You always have to turn the hand back further than you think to get a, um, 
a lateral, I think. So that's probably fairly lateral there. There, just gone a little bit more. So you can see that in the fingers, if anything, the little finger is in and the index finger is out. Let's see if I've done that correctly or whether I'm over rotated. So we'll position it in the anatomical snuff box. This is where we're going to aim our central ray and we'll see whether I've got a reasonable position here. So not looking too bad actually. So um, that position with the um, the little metacarpal attached to the little finger being further round than the index metacarpal is actually going to give us a nice lateral there. You can see we've got the ulna styloid here um, and the head of ulna and we've got the radius pretty much superimposed. This is the lunate, nice cup shaped lunate there. Um, and the capitate sitting in the cup. Pisiform anterior. And the hook of hamate. So, um, nice images all round. So that will give us our scaphoid series.